Wayne workshop I have problems with the Boxford lathe's forward and reverse switch something's gone wrong with it so I'll have to take it apart and find out what the problem is we start by making some new rollers for the switch but this was after I'd already taken the switch apart and found out what the problem was so let's go into the workshop see how we did it I'm just starting to make some rollers for my lathe switch obviously to get the lathe to work I've had to put the switch back together I measured the rollers that were in there so I want to skim this half inch bar to 7 sixteenths so I haven't got to take much off and try and get a really good finish because it's the OD on this that works the switch Point four forty nine. Now I need to polish that with some emery cloth because the outside will be the bearing face. Okay, next job is to drill a hole through the middle. first one off I want to just chamfer the corner with a, all I'm doing is putting a file on there and I'm just going to take a sharp edge out of the bore to rub the emery cloth over the face just to make sure it's smooth change for my parting off tool Before I part that right off, I just want to put the chamfer on the edge that I'm parting off. And for this side again, I just touch the tool up against the workpiece, move it in, point one. And then go point two. 
lock the saddle. Before I part that off, I'll just put the scraper in the in the board just to take the sharp edge off. for the side foil yeah there are two rollers if I measure the thickness of these the originals were 0 0.2065 but I think they'd have worn down over the years so that's 0 0.210 and this one 0 0.2105 have to put a flat on the outside and I think that just locates the springs and stops them slipping off so what I'll do is mill a three millimeter wide slot on the outside edge just to give a position to hold the spring flat on the one. So that's finished. So I've got the two rollers made to replace the ones that are already in there. The two new rollers fitted on the switch and this is why I had to replace them. To look at this switch on the Boxford it moves from there to there before it will go on. In fact that's, that's a you see that's not very positive so something's obviously gone wrong inside so what I'll do is switch it off move the plug we'll take this off and we'll have a look inside to see what's gone wrong disconnected from the power supply here's the plug I know it's safe this lever is held on with a screw goes through the shaft and holds the handle to the shaft. Now the box is held on with a screw each side. I've already taken the screw off the other side. That takes the box off. You can see it's worn slightly on the centre there. Cover over the top and the connections. There being a rotary switch there are a lot of wires connected to this so what I want to do is trace where the wires go so anybody that has one of these rotary switches with the same electric motor can rewire it. So on this there's a screw at the top here and one at the bottom to hold the switch in position. So that's just a piece of insulation. It's probably to stop any fluid dripping down into the switch. There's a spacer that was behind there. First of all, before I take anything else off, I want to trace where the wires go to. It goes under there for some reason, but it's not attached into the lathe. Then we have a pink cable onto terminal 5, another white cable onto terminal 2, 
the red wire goes to terminal 4 and the black wire goes to terminal 1 and there's a link from terminal 5 to so this one's not numbered on the top but it's got a link in from the pink terminal 5 black that goes to this terminal on the top so the make of this switch is Santon England 16 amp 380 volt it's got L73 at the bottom and the top it has SBV 137KA so what I think is wrong with this if you turn that there's no resistance there to anything so it might be this spring that's gone I can undo this top nut here and it'll just take the plate off with the springs if I undo the second nut all these sections will come out there are springs under here so there's a nut and a washer I'll take the cover off Oh, that's probably just dirt. You can see this spring here. I think it should be round on the top of this, and it's fell into the centre. So I'll take that out. You can see here it's full of. That looks like grease. So if I take this spring off, it goes underneath that one on the top of that one, and the other springs come off. These are the rollers. There's a piece of insulation inside, square insulation, and the rod goes straight through with a little locating pin on the end. So that rod goes into there straight through the other side. The locating pin goes in the bottom. There's some dirt and muck in here. It just wants a good clean out and a bit of grease. Hopefully I can reassemble that. So I'm just taking the cover off the motor. You see there are four connections in the motor. The cables are not really identified as such. I just have white and pink which doesn't really help. What I've done in the past, look, I've put some red tape on this side so this, these two, white and pink, go to one side and another white and pink go to the other. I'm assuming these are the coils in the motor. So what I need to know is which white and pink go to which on the rotary switch. You can see the connector block down here and this is the switch here at the top. When I join the two wires together on the test equipment Will go to zero. When the wires are open it goes to one. It just tells me if the wires connected. Select a pink wire. This is number five terminal and I will test whether it goes to the pink wire. Yes. So number five pink wire goes directly to the pink wire where I've marked up as the red coil. And the other pink wire is connected to third layer down which has number two and this one which is not numbered so I'll just hold it on there and that is the other pink wire from the other coil which also has a wire connecting it to number six so one pink wire goes to number five the other goes to six with a connection to the terminal here which is not numbered which is three layers above terminal four. So we know the two pink wires, one wire goes to each coil and it should be the same on the white. So if I track the white, this white goes to terminal three. So terminal three goes to the same coil as the wire on terminal five. Yes. So terminal three and five are the same coil. So that means the wire that goes to terminal 7 should be the other coil yes the other white wire on the other coil goes to terminal 3 and is linked to terminal 7 terminal 1 which is negative goes to my isolation switches and terminal 
four is positive it goes to the on off switch this is the wiring diagram as far as I can work out here we have the motor and there are two I think there are two coils in the motor I have a white and a pink wire coming from one side of the motor and a white and pink wire coming from the other side of the motor in the switch which is represented here we have seven terminals that are numbered and two terminals that haven't got a number or haven't got a letter so I've just called them A and B but A is on one of the top sections of the switch and B is about three sections down this is the switch this is the handle and that the switch is made up of sections discs with contacts on so the top section is A and about the third section down is B but on my switch they're not numbered the ones that are numbered number one from the lower of the lathe number two goes to the coil on the motor which is a white wire it's a coil I've called it coil A number three goes to the white wire on coil B and also there's a link to number seven number four if connection from the switch uh, to switch the lathe on and off number five is the pink wire from coil B which is connected to A number six is connected to B and is the pink wire to coil A now this is for a Boxford lathe uh, it's a 240 volt motor obviously if you're using a different voltage or have a different type of motor the wiring could be different but this is how it was wired up when I purchased the lathe uh, just to give you some idea and looking at the stack here the st when I say the stack if you look at the switch it's made of a, a series of different sections the top I've said is where the handle goes and the bottom so I have two connectors on the stack one is in the top row and the other is in the third row and I've called them A and B here's the wiring for the one side of the switch terminal 1, 6, 8 and an unmarked one and the other side two three five seven and an unmarked one okay I fitted the springs the top spring goes under the bottom and on the top of this one and the bottom spring goes on the top of this and under the bottom of that one so once you have the springs in the correct position we'll put the pl I'll grease that and put the plate on I've put the cover plate on the other side two nuts and two star washers needs to be done now is the metal box put back over the top two screws for the box handle Let's see how it works a lot more positive these are the two rollers that I took out see the edges are all worn there's flats on them in fact there's a slot in that one that looks as if it's gone all the way through. Well that's it for today. I hope that's useful to somebody. I hope to see you next time. I know you're not sitting near it. <laughs>